Hello my soccer universe. What a week this was, especially in Luskland. I mean, I already made a video after the coach got fired, which already ticked me off. But that was only the beginning of a true mad saga where everything snowballs, snowballs, snowballs. It seems like all is going down, which unfortunately my club is wont to do. And I sometimes really wonder why am I supporting this team? <laughs> I guess it is family tradition to support the team, but sometimes you really, really wonder. And then they pull out a miracle win. It's, there's no other way to call this. And suddenly the opponent is the team in crisis when Lusk was very much in total, absolute crisis mode. And the actions that have been going on there, I mean, uh, uh, from a leadership perspective, it was absolutely pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. However, how the team pulled out of this really, really rough week, huge credit has to be given to them. Huge credit has, 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 has to be given to them. But yeah, uh, we also have that we probably have a pre-decision in the relegation in Austria. We have more or less that uh, two-way title race again. The top two teams are now level on points when just two weeks ago it seemed like it's all pointing strongly towards Salzburg. And I think everything in the top level, we have a battle for 1-2, we have a battle for 3-4, we have a battle for 5-6, uh, 5 six, five being still a playoff spot most likely. So that is, you just want to avoid the sixth. So everything kind of finely poised. And on the bottom, yes, Austria Venus probably win that one the way things things are going, but two teams are more or less celebrating safety. So yeah, there you go. But I wanna start this video with the absolute abject week that Lusk had. And sorry if this is gonna take a little bit a little bit longer, but I just have to get this all off my chest. I did two short videos, but a teeny bit more detail. So we had the coach fired and we had new coach or new interim coach Marcel Richer kinda officially appointed. 30 year old. Uh, he has been assistant under uh, all the previous coaches and so on, so uh, since I think 22. So, um, seemed like a decent appointment. Um, everything, okay, this is the new thing. Then Lust comes out and it's also convoluted. The word is relatively creative fan protests uh, in Graz against the pink jerseys for Lusk. And this is a video in, in, in itself that eventually I'm gonna make, I'm not gonna make it right now. Uh, but basically uh, the sponsor is dictating that we play in pink jersey, it was not necessary. Lusk fans really don't like that. There's a big fan movement going to saying, uh, you know, get rid of this pink jersey, it's not against the color of pink. It's because the sponsor is demanding that this color is being played because they are associated with this color. So, um, and I said in the last week's video, I really loved what they were doing. Uh, I'm actually pulling up here some pink pictures, how they put in in a big washing machine some pink jerseys and black and red jerseys, away jerseys came out and then they were throwing wash tabs onto the pitch. It has to be said, there was no one there. Absolutely no one, uh, but still, you know, it had to be removed, blah, 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 and it caused a five minute delay because of that. And some other than they left some washing machines in front of the stadium, uh, you know, kind of pulling a little bit things out. There were other things happening uh, this year. In any case, for that reason, Lusk announced that there are stadium bans. And the stadium bans for all because of safety reasons, because everyone, is, uh, it needs the first priority should be that there's safety in the stadium. You know, the safety thing is when there are pyrotechnics thrown. I don't think wash taps being thrown is such a huge safety issue in the first place. Second of all, they did not even punish the people that were involved. They punished the of the leading fan organization, the president, the vice president, the cashier, uh, and uh, the vice cashier. And, you know, all, they just went by list these guys uh, and they are responsible. Uh, curiously enough, they also uh, banished a person that is uh, behind an initiative, the initiative Black and White, to get um, to uh, 
get rid of the pink more or less you know that uh, we are only using the club's color which is black white and red on our jerseys uh because he was also involved yeah he was involved he was holding up the clothesline he didn't even throw a thing so very deliberately trying to send out the wrong people uh something that should have been in the media way more covered i mean if you're a little bit in the fan uh, area that just doesn't sound right it's absolutely just hitting the wrong people one of the band people was involved was in the stadium but more than a thousand kilometers away studying away from home so uh, it, it just underlines the the club and the fans are not on the same side and there is a huge conflict that no one is willing to resolve I, I, I guess your fan club is trying to resolve it but there's no will from the Lusk side to give in I personally think uh, while they play like the tough guys it's all about they need the money they really need the money because they built a new stadium they have an expensive team blah 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 uh, they have to pay off I think uh, at least two coaches now they really need the money and they cannot talk straight and say you know uh we also don't like the pink jersey it's just they are giving us a whole lot of the money that we wear the pink this is what i think is behind no one says it though and it's a really 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 ugly conflict and because of all that um you know there have been other promises broken it's really at a, a there's no trust anymore it goes back right where we were under the previous ownership where you also didn't like the leading people because of the stadium bans then the stadium announcer stepped down he wanted to step down at the end of the year he stepped down immediately <sighs> and this is how you went into the Salzburg game <laughs> but wait there is more Friday was also the time when the licenses for the next season are handed out in the first uh, <laughs> time uh, attempting and leading up to it the big story is will Austria Vienna get the license will Austria Vienna get the license they are the eternal they are in such a bad shape Austria Vienna did get the license I don't quite understand how but I guess they have been working out the scenes they want to sell the stadium blah 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 which is also an idiotic move Austria Vienna is getting the license there's only one Bundesliga team that is not getting the license these guys and why? I mean, when I read this one, I, my first thought, uh, this was serious flashback trauma. Because in the 2000s, Lusk never got the license on the first time trying. Uh, and it really became the nadir, I think, when in 2013 or 2012, I always get the, they did not get the license at all. It had to be re relegated to the amateur ranks. Uh, so serious flashback trauma for me then. But then it comes out, it's because that the announced coach does not have the proper UEFA Pro license, which during the licensing process, which is based in March through April, there needs to be a coach holding the UEFA Pro license. I mean, such a damage to the image of a club done. Yes, Lusk realized that too late. I quickly appointed uh, another coach and said that Richard again is only the assistant but it was too late it was too late and there was also some irony because they said yeah this was a very deliberate decision they don't understand the Bundesliga and I'm thinking yeah uh, but you had also made a very deliberate decision to ban those fan club, club, club comments for no particular reason either it's just hitting you back this way I cannot tell you the policy that was going on there and I still have not recovered from, from, from that. Uh, the media narrative is now moving elsewhere, I will talk about that in a sec, but what was happening in these three days and again the fan protests are totally underreported because this is a huge shame what's going on, how Lusk is treating their own fans who are just voicing and are trying to be critical but it's shut up we want to take the money and we don't want to listen to, to, to you and if you don't behave we're gonna cut you out that's what has been happening really 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 annoying really 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 annoying for the simple reason we sh there should be a huge positive vibe around the club at this moment new stadium 
you played Europa League, you played against Liverpool. Uh, Lask is as good as they have ever been. Yes, five years ago they were probably even better. But uh, it's the moment, the way that the team is, I have never had such a good face as a Lask fan. But the mood over the past five years have been going downhill around it. And this is such a shame. And I think there's also personal vanity in there because I think the current president, he wants to be appreciated for what he built. And yes, I think every last fan is thankful to him, but you cannot behave like a flat track bully. This is where it's going to. So with all this, we're going into the Salzburg game. Yes, the Salzburg game. Salzburg on the back of Yes, they have beaten Sturm Graz, but they have then lost to Sturm Graz in the cup at home. They've only managed a 1-1 draw against Rapid. So they were also a little bit in crisis and, you know, a wounded animal that wants to go for the championship. And honestly, yes, in the first minute, Salzburg could, 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 could have scored. There was a bad, uh, bad pass out. And the last time we played Salzburg, you know, we also went down the first minute. So fortunately, Koita hit, 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 hit it right. But then Lask actually got into the game and got a penalty it was one of those where two players want to clear the last player got the first uh, the other one hits him in the foot it's a penalty took a little bit on var but it was a, pen a, a, a penalty and ljubicic who i have been bemoaning yes i know it was down to confidence and i don't think he was necessarily uh he's a bad player but uh he was ahead had <laughs> the really rough page he steps up and converts this one high up and with so much uh, confidence, although he has been lacking confidence, that this immediately gave him a boost. You could see the team was lifted from that because you don't convert panel penalties so easily high, high up against a former teammate. Uh, and then just uh, eight minutes later, it was a really nice play. I mean, yes, Salzburg defensively were abject. They couldn't play out, they made a, a, a multiple errors play, play playing out and there was one where then uh, that actually allowed uh, Lars to really build up nicely. Uh, the ball comes to Flecker who is on the outside, multiple Salzburg defenders converging two or two towards him and Ljubicic is just attacking the near the near post, ball come, comes in, it just has to tap it in, it's 2-0 for Lask. That doesn't happen against Salzburg that easily. That really doesn't. Ljubicic should have had a third one then on. As we say, the second half uh, changes have been made. Salzburg was then pressing without being really... I mean, watching this game, and uh, unfortunately I was not at the game. I didn't manage it. I really felt sick. And uh, it hurts a little bit that for once you beat Salzburg. So Salzburg and I can't, can't, can't be in, in the stadium. But uh, probably ate something bad. My mood, based on what was happening, was already a little bit down. Uh, and so, yeah, and my wife also didn't feel that great. So we unfortunately did not go to the stadium. Uh, but, you know, I, on the other side, I would not have enjoyed it. I, I, I felt really sick on, the, on, 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 the, on that evening. So there you go. That, that was it. Salzburg came a little bit back. Uh, tried to take control, but uh, Lask were always dangerous. And then they hit the counter, they bring on um, uh, uh, various players. Lask padded it all back for most of the time. It was just there, and then in the 73rd minute, Bello gain, gains a ball, plays it over to Liu, to, 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 to Ljubicic, who he again yanks it. It's 3 0 in the 73rd minute. And there's the weird scene. He's celebrating. However, the last fans, and I didn't mention that because there was so much going on, the last fans actually, because of the stadium bands, made a fan boycott to not have organized chance. And there was this weird thing that you scored a 3 0 against Salzburg, and the entire block is not jumping wildly up and down. <sighs> Weird days. Weird days. Salzburg pulled one back. Laval has to make a major save to keep the game at 3-1. But they see it out and suddenly Salzburg is the team in crisis. Right after the game they ask Coach Struber multiple times whether he sees that his uh, job is, is, is in nature. Now, the news uh, on Monday morning is that, yes, he actually might get fired as well. So Salzburg panicking and the big talk, of course, is there that, you know, many players 
are already thinking about their next step. They're not necessarily focused on the team. And this is for me any anyway another issue, but an another video. Bye. What a glorious end to an absolutely terrible week. And it actually got better than with the games played on Sunday. But uh, we have to go Saturday next. And I'll do this rather rather short. Uh, Lucena losing a derby at home to Altach. Um, basically relegates. I mean, it means safety for Altach. Altach have, have, have now a very comfortable cushion. Uh, it's eight points ahead of Lustena. They're not going to relinquish that, 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 that one because I don't see Lust, Lustena going anywhere. It was all the time Lust, Lustena defending, Altach having always the better of the, of, of the play. Lustena also playing in Bregenz uh, because the stadium being rebuilt it does not look good for Lus Lus now. They are probably going going now. It was a gut punch for them. Uh, also, the other Linz team still cannot win. The last time they won was against uh, in the Derby. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Um, they were they conceded two early goals in each of the halves against uh, VSG, who are also now sitting eight points clear of Lusna. And it was always it will be between VSG and Austria Lusna. No, it's now not good. They are 15 15. Austria Lusna have seven. Uh, but at least for Blau Blau, says they pull one goal, they score a goal uh, through Dobras, but it was a little too little too late. So Blau West Linz. It's now rumored maybe, maybe they could get dragged into it, but it's still five points. However, they're also not in good, good, good form and will always come down to the head to head, which will be played in Bregenz, also has to be said. Uh, and then for the top tops for Austria Vienna, get a deserved win. Uh, Ranftler Gruber, Gruppe, former, two former last players combining in the 11th minute to get the goal. Yes, Wolfsburg tried, but uh, it's also too little. And Wolfsburg also did not have a good start to this qual qualification round. There's also some rumblings. They will probably go into the playoffs, but at the, at, at the moment, the form is rather, rather abject, and Austria Vienna might run away with the qualification group. Then, with Salzburg close, let's go back to, to the championship, championship. Sturm Graz could draw level on points. Yes, goal difference still speaking for Salzburg. So Salzburg, they have uh, a little bit more there. Uh, and Sturm Graz got the win in Hartberg. It was, you know, it's a derby game. In, not a derby, derby, but you know, both, both, both teams are from Asteria. Uh, Pras early on makes it 1-0. Hartberg is keeping it tight but making mistakes and so uh, they give away a penalty. Kit Kittish really can't con convert. FGI pulls one back but then Goran Sankovic makes it 3-1. There was even after the 2-1, you never had it in doubt that Sturm Graz will win this game. So it's 3-1 for Sturm Graz. And they're now level on points. Hartberg at the, at, at the moment seems to be the team in the worst shape, at least form-wise, uh, in the uh, um, championship round. Because Klagenfurt should have been done by more than one goal. I mean, that was a bad goalkeeping mistake uh, through Janssen. Uh, you know, Janssen shoots, but the goal is right there and it goes under his body through. Uh, Rapid had chances to have a one, a two or three goal lead at that just early in the second half. Uh, Bezushkov uh, yanks one in for Klang Klangfurt. Uh, there was a clearance of the line by Mara, uh, where Rapid could have made it 2-1. But Klagenfurt hold out this 1-1 one, one draw, which actually means that in the table, Rapid lose the third spot they just had gained from Lusk, being 11 points and having then a superior goal difference. They lose the at one again, and Lusk is two points clear of Rapid. Um, Rapid definitely would have liked the 1-1 one, one draw they got at Salzburg, but now Lusk upended them by beating Salzburg at, at, at home. And if I look at it, we beat Klagenfurt at home. Rapid only won one against Clark Klagenfurt. I always, I, I honestly think that Rapid have improved tremendously. I think overall, uh, form wise, Rapid look like a good team. However, uh, sometimes their goal scoring lets them down, and this is my hope that maybe Lusk will still grab this third spot. However, uh, that's the last point. Uh, third spot only guarantees you a spot in the group phase if Rapid do not win the cup. And the repeat in the cup final against Sturm Graz, where they're outsiders. But the cup winner will, the cup winner, unless they qualify for the Champions League, the cup winner will get this secure Europa, Europa League or Europa Conference League group stage. And so third spot might not be enough for Lusk if Rapid should win the cup. So Sturm Graz. I want Sturm Graz to even win the double, although 
I always feel that Sturm Graz, their success is something that Lask should do the same, but leadership. Club leadership! That's what letting Lask down big time. So yeah, a crazy week ends. Sorry for the long video and sorry for forgetting about the fan boycott in there. Uh, it was just so many things happening. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, the next round will play Hartberg at home. Uh, should be should be an easy win. However, Hartberg is the one team that we seemingly cannot beat. So this is long overdue. And yeah, we have to see. Uh, we have also some other interesting games uh, coming uh, with Rapid against Sturm playing. I mean, that's already... They are playing now three times within uh, two weeks in the cup final uh, and twice in, in the league before that. So we're going to get a whole lot of uh, Sturm against Rapid. And let's see what happens with Coach Zruba and what will Salzburg uh, do. Can they mount, can they regroup or will Sturm run away with it? That's, I think, one of the biggest questions at this very moment. In any case, let me know your thoughts. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!